Hello, well, I am very pleased about this new PCB that I've got. Just got it delivered today. Um, this is the controller board, the microcode controller board for my 6502 CPU project. And I would say this is the most advanced PCB that I've so far managed to get built. Um, they all get made by JLC PCB and I designed them on Easy EDA. And I had quite a problem getting everything onto this one because I go for the 10 by 10 centimeter PCBs, which are the ones that are the cheapest. And um, getting this many components onto a board means that the router had quite a bit of problem routing the tracks, the auto router. I always use the auto router. So I pulled the components on. I did my kind of favoured uh, rounded corner, which I quite like, on them. Um, positioned all the components, did an auto route, and it got to about 98% and stuck. Tried again, and it got to about 98% and stuck. And I had to move a few bits and pieces around, and I just moved things around at random and tried again until it eventually worked. Now this is the control board for the 6502 CPU. Um, so now I've got my register board um, in sort of design phase. I've got the, well, I've got a prototype of the registers and uh, I'm designing the real thing for the registers. This is a prototype for the controller. Um, I've, I'm waiting for the ALU section to come back and I'm designing the bit that does the flag. So I've kind of split the CPU into four boards. So there'll be four boards stacked up probably on top of each other or next to each other or something. And this is the one that controls the others. This is the one that actually, it's kind of the heart of it that does the actual work. So you've got three big sockets um, at the top here which are gonna have EEPROMs in it, which do the microcode decoding. Um, the microcode steps are controlled by a counter up here and we should be able to see the clock coming in here and the microcode steps here. And the rest of it is just really um, logic to decode all the, the controls for the, for the various different states that you need for the microcode. And I should be able to show uh, across the middle there the, um, the state of uh, the various control lines that are going out to other parts of the CPU. So I think I'm gonna put some sockets in and see if I can get something working at least. Well, this is where I've got up to so far after soldering in a few sockets and plugging in the first IC, which is a four bit binary counter. Um, on the left, I've got my variable clock generator, square wave generator with a variable um, speed of clock, which I made in a previous video. And it's not too interesting really how that works right at this very moment in time. But what it does is it produces a square wave Actually, it's donating five volts and ground at the moment onto the main board and it's producing a square wave, <clears throat> which is going for the blue wire. And that is clocking this 163, the four bit binary counter here. Um, and that binary count is being shown up here. So we've got the high clock and low clock here. So when clock's high, this one's on. When clock's low, this one's on. And um, the reset pin for the counter is being held um, high. It's a low going reset. It's being held high by this little jumper that I've put in because the logic for the resetting of the counter isn't yet implemented. So when the counter's being reset, the counter's gone to zero. And when the counter's not being reset, the count counts up on each transition of the pulse from low to high. So we've gone up to three, then we've gone up to four, then we go up to five. There we are. So um, that is the, the sort of the heartbeat of the system. And they, they these lights are here are counting the microcode instructions. So we'll be on microcode instruction stage zero when it's when they're all off, and we'd be on microcode instruction stage one when the first one comes on. So let's say we ask the CPU to perform the load A with 10 instruction, and load A with 10 took three microcode steps. So that would be microcode step 0, 1, and 2. So we would expect to see microcode 0, 1, 2, and then go back to 0. So we'd perform three microcode steps. So what are these mysterious microcode instructions? Well, they're going to be stored in each of these three EEPROMs here. And the four bits, the four binary bits coming from the microcode counter are fed into the EEPROMs as their bottom four address lines, their lowest four address lines. So those four bits will form part of the address that goes into the EEPROM 
and the instruction register, which will be shown here, um, forms the other eight bits that go into the EEPROM, which will then be decoded by the EEPROM into the microcode instructions. Right, so I've wired up a few more bits and pieces now, soldered in a couple more sockets. And what I've now got then is the current instruction going to the instruction register and some of the instruction being decoded by the EEPROM into here. So what happens is if we want to do a fetch, decode and execute cycle, which is the cycle that a CPU does all the time, then we'll fetch first of all into this instruction register here. That's the where the current instruction is stored. Well, normally we'd be fetching from memory. We'd be fetching from the location that the program counter is pointing to, but I haven't got any memory yet. I haven't got a program counter even. So um, I've got the uh, world's crummiest keyboard that I built in a previous video. Um, so let's say we had instruction one uh, coming in from the memory. So we'll pretend this is the memory that is sort of standing in from the memory and we can fetch by pressing this button here. So fetching has fetched the current instruction one into the instruction register and that is then passed to the EEPROM and decoded to these bits here. The first four bits tell us what we're, um, which register is going to be publishing and the last four bits tell us which register is going to be storing. So this would be publishing register 15 and storing register, uh, what's that, 6, publishing, so publishing 15 and storing to 6. And then when we move on to the next clock cycle, which we do by going here, we would be publishing um, three and storing in five. In fact, that's the first, all the lights are off. So that's the very first micro instruction. I accidentally started on the wrong micro instru instruction. So then we'd move to the next micro instruction by clocking onto the next one. So I've got uh, this switch here linked up to the clock and this one um, doing the fetch. So that would move us on to the next micro instruction and we would be publishing four and storing in uh, seven. And then we move on to the next micro instruction. We'd be publishing whatever that is, one and storing in uh, six. Is that right? Yeah, six. <laughs> um, so this is how the the basics of the controller works. You fetch, we'd fetch the next micro, we'd fetch the next, well, I'll tell you what we'd do. We first of all would reset the micro code pointer back to zero. We'd fetch the next instruction. Well, let's make it a more interesting instruction than that. Let's fetch instruction 10. So we put 10 there, we fetch 10 into the instruction register. And then by stepping through on the clock, we can step through up to 16 microcode instructions which all appear to have exactly the same value in. So I chose a very boring location in my EEPROM there. Let's try a more interesting one. 